culture of nursing excellence through integration of digital health. For this session to join us virtually, we have Professor Na Yin Ko, who is PhD and RN, Director and Distinguished Professor, Department of Nursing from College of Medicine, National Cheng Kung University, Taiwan with us. Dr. Na Yin Ko is currently a Distinguished Professor and Director of Department of Nursing at National Cheng Kung University. Dr. Ko contributed on global health and achieving sustainable development goals in training and empowering healthcare professionals and future nurse leaders from China, Kenya, Indonesia, Myanmar, Vietnam in disaster management, leadership and prevention and clinical care. Welcome. Next, I invite Ms. Bobby Ramesh, who is the nursing director at Continental Hospitals, Hyderabad. She has held several prestigious positions in the domain of nursing and healthcare. Currently, the director of nursing at Continental he Hospital Hyderabad. She has formerly been director of nursing at Parkway Pentai India Operations Department and commands a strong presence with a checkered journey in her chosen domain of nursing, which she remains a steadfast champion of nursing. Quality. She is also principal assessor for NABH and NABN Nursing Excellence and has more than 26 years of experience. Welcome, ma'am. Next, I invite Ms. Elizabeth David, who is the nursing director, head of strategy and new initiatives at Sir H. N. Reliance Foundation Hospital. She is a nurse administrator currently associated with this hospital as nursing director, head of strategy and new initiatives, and also a NABH assessor. She carries 20 plus years of experience in clinical practice and academic teaching, program development and administration, and has taken up leadership role in driving institutes towards quality accreditation. Welcome, ma'am. Next, I invite Ms. Suganda B. Nayak, who is additional director of nursing at Jaslok Hospital, Mumbai, she is a postgraduate in nursing with a total of 30 years of working experience from LT College of Nursing, SNDT University. Presently working as additional director of nursing at Jaslok Hospital, during her working experience, she has been part of various teaching programs, staff development programs, apart from collaborating with hospital services in organizing management and skills training for the staff nurses in Jaslok Hospital. Welcome, ma'am. Next, I invite Professor Dr. Rajesh Shah, who is a renowned professor and doctor at SAIT, LG General Hospital and AMCMT Medical College in Ahmedabad. He is a surgery professor and has guided and taught numerous budding doctors and surgery students with his knowledge. He also is a medical legal expert. He is the founder president of Federation of International Law and Medicine, Ethics and Innovations. He is an assessor for Medical Council of India and National Board of Exams. Welcome, sir. I also invite Ms. Prajakta Henlekar, who is uh, the Director of Nursing and Chief Experience Officer at Breach Candy Hospital Trust, Mumbai. She has 28 years of various uh, experience in various roles in nursing. She is currently the Director of Nursing and Chief Experience Officer and has previously worked with Global Hospitals Group as Chief of Nursing, Deputy Chief of Nursing and Nursing Supervisor. She has worked as assistant lecturer for LT College of Nursing, SNDT Women's University. She has also worked in Shady Groove, Adventurous Hospital, Maryland, USA, and charge, uh, as charge nurse, preceptor, and RN for more than three years. Welcome, ma'am. This session would be led by Mrs. Bobby Ramesh. So, ma'am, I hand it over to you. Thank you. A very good evening to all. It's indeed my privilege to be part of this esteemed panel, and I'd like to welcome all the panelists uh, to this panel discussion on nursing excellence to improve better patient outcomes. I'd like to thank Voice of Healthcare to include a nursing panel even before the pandemic has started, whereas many other organizations have started, uh, started including nursing uh, panel discussions only after the COVID. So thank you so much, Dr. Navin Nishal. 
And I'd like to start with the quote, to do what nobody else will do, a way that nobody else can do, in spite of all that we go through, that is to be a nurse. Nurses play a very important role in taking care of the sick, in people's rehabilitation, and also in the wellness programs. However, they don't get the respect and recognition what they deserve, especially in our country. Though being a nurse is a very highly demanding job, it is a very fulfilling job as well because we touch so many people's lives who have this opportunity to take care of a newborn when a baby is born and when the parents are very happy, to take care of patients when they go happily recovering from the hospital, to be with a patient who is dying in the ICU and closing his or her eyes. This liberty a nurse only has. Many a times a nurse only calls for the doctor when the patient gets critical. So we touch so many people's lives and so it is very, very a fulfilling job. When the whole world was struck by fear and uncertainty during this COVID-19 pandemic. It was the nurses who were actively in the front line, assisting patients and physicians without any fear. Nurses comprom comprise the largest population of healthcare in the world. In spite of that, in all these new technology and digital health advances, the nurses' voices are too often absent how many of those tech companies and digital health organization include nurses or make them participate in decision making or value their inputs? They are not included. Having said that, the use of digital health as a channel of practice is very much recommended to strengthen the nursing services and also to significantly improve the uh, patient outcomes. I'd like to welcome our first panelist, Ms. Elizabeth David, to discuss various digital health initiatives implemented in her hospital in the Department of Nursing. And also, I'd like to uh, ask a question on what the role of specialized remote monitoring devices to improve the response of ward-based nurses to intervene effectively and to prevent unexpected codes across organizations. Elizabeth, over to you. Thank you, Bobby. Um, and thank you, everybody. Thank you, Voice of Healthcare, for having us over here. It's a great privilege to be a part of this esteemed um, you know, deliberation. And I'm quite happy to be talking about this topic here. Of course, in the last 30 years, technological advances have transformed the medical landscape. And we have a plethora of a lot of kind of digital technologies which are available which even claim that we can provide better care, safe care, efficient care, and even error-free care, which can also add value to patient experience. While this is all there, we are very um, concerned about the kind of technology that we want to adopt for our hospital, because we definitely have a very clear objective and a roadmap that we go along while we convert our hospital to a digital hospital. So, uh, Bobby, I really want to thank you for the second question, and I take the liberty to answer that first, because that's something that I'm really working on right now, which is remote patient monitoring. And for, to answer this question, I would like all of you who work in a hospital to probably go back to your wards where your nurses are taking care of the patients out there. Now, we as administrators make a lot of policies, and that is one of our very important job. And we keep correcting and getting them better and better with every instant or every event that happens in the hospital. Eventually, while these policies become comprehensive, they also become equally complicated, right? So when taking a very simple example of patient monitoring, most of the hospitals, we would expect our patients to be monitored in the wards every four to six hours, I mean, depending from hospital to hospital. And in addition, you would also expect the nurses to have a higher frequency of monitoring. Let's say a patient who has just come back from the operation theater, or a patient who's probably on a blood transfusion, or who somebody, or just having an infusion of a high-risk medicine, or probably even in the high-risk zone of your early warning scores. Now, in these situations, you expect the nurse to monitor the patient every 15 minutes, maybe every half an hour, 
or maybe even more. But now you have a patient who's taking care, a nurse, sorry, who's taking care of about four to six patients at a given time. And probably in the real world, even more, maybe seven to eight patients. Are we even sure that she's monitoring the patients the way we want them to be monitored? I don't think so. And it is not practical to expect that. Now, let's say we have a nurse who's very, very diligent, very meticulously monitoring. Imagine a patient who's getting disturbed every 15 minutes to half an hour, right after surgery to get monitored, right? And we do not even know what happens in that span of 15 minutes while she's away. You invariably see a patient hooked onto a monitor with probably just a relative sitting in front of them. And I wonder who's monitoring the patient. Is it the nurse or is it the relative? So I think these are situations where remote patient monitoring is really going to be a big boon for us. And that's exactly what we are working on because we want our nurses to be more efficient and our patients to be monitored better. So what is remote patient monitoring? It's basically the use of digital technologies to ensure that you're capturing and monitoring all the vital parameters of a patient and making sure that it is transmitted to a healthcare professional who can evaluate and give the necessary guidance. So the advantages, as the question rightly asked, Bobby, is very clear, that a physician, wherever he or she is, need not be in a hospital, can monitor a patient every time 24-7. Obviously, the errors of documentation, inaccuracies of time are eradicated. The, you pick up you pick up the ranges pretty early in time so that you avoid a situation of a code blue. And studies have proven that with the use of remote patient monitoring, you can reduce a lot of such code blue events in the ward. So that's about remote patient monitoring, of course. And we have a lot of other digital initiatives that we have implemented in our hospital, which specifically for nursing, Talking about documentation, we talked a lot about the electronic health record, and we have implemented an end-to-end -end, uh, solution for EHR. We do not use any paper unless it's for consent forms. We also have a lot of other initiatives specifically for the nurse managers, because one of the pain points is credentialing and privileging of nurses. We have volumes and volumes of paper that we use, which just ends up becoming a ticking exercise and something to show off to the NABH or the JCI assessors when they come over. But what we have tried to do here is make it more digital, wherein you have a real-time dashboard available so that a, a CNO or a nursing director very clearly knows how many nurses she has of what level of capability and competency. We've also digitalized our patient equity system and nurse assignment system. We also have developed certain uh, solutions for Nurse, uh, nursing care triggers in the form of moisture alerts or change of position alerts, because these are important, very important. You end up having pressure sores. You end up having patients leaving the hospital, not with something that they came for, but with something even more different. So these are all the things that we have implemented in our hospital in the form of uh, digitalization. Thank you, Elizabeth. It was quite informative. Now I'd like to ask Professor Nainko, who's a director and professor in nursing in the prestigious National Chengkung University, Taiwan, on the digital technologies available to strengthen nursing education and how the future generation of nurses can be prepared to adopt digital technology. Over to you, Dr. Nainko. Uh, thank you all. And yeah, it is my great honor to share with you about uh, how technology can improve nursing education. Yeah, and the first of all is uh, actually I am an expert in infectious disease. So during COVID-19, I has been uh, working and uh, fighting for COVID uh, almost yeah, two and a half year. Yeah, and I also as an inventor. So from the uh, the the photo you will see, uh, I have been invested several technology uh, such as a wearable device and uh, using uh, cross sourcing to uh, develop uh, app 
to fighting for e uh, either dengue fever or COVID-19 since now. And I would say uh, uh, how to apply digital technology. I would say that is uh, innovation, collaboration, in nursing education. So that's why I say ICN. And uh, during COVID-19, this is me. Yeah, you see. Uh -huh. Yeah, the new normal will be uh, we have to uh, live, live in with virus and uh, also to provide care and learning without border. And how about nursing education post COVID-19? I think we have to think what changes and uh, how do we change our curriculum? And then uh, pedagogy, how to teach. And I was share with you that is important to create an educational experience is to emphasize on social presence, cognitive presence, and also the teaching presence. Yeah, and you know, during COVID-19, yeah, uh, we have using the teaching presence and uh, using technology to engage students, to make them cognitive uh, to working with you, but without them really uh, being with you in a classroom. But even in a traditional classroom, yeah, we have people, we have students with us, but we lost their attention. So even our student is with us, but it's still the cognitive pre, uh, present didn't happen. So I think that is important. How do we teach? Yeah, we teach from distance, but we also can work together and engage students to make them uh, with you cognitively, socially, and also uh, with you uh, as a teaching process. Yeah, so uh, in Taiwan, we are already uh, NCKU hospital and also uh, Department of Nursing, uh, Cultural Medicine in NCKU. We already apply VR, AR, and we design a uh, curriculum practical uh, to apply VR in our uh, teaching uh, strategy. We also apply several uh, uh, the, the game, game, yeah, we apply game like Kahoo or uh, we using Slido. Yeah, to working with students, we can give them a, a quiz or a small test or pre-test. Yeah, we we'll try to engage our students. Yeah, even though we are in different place. Yeah, and this is try to show us in the traditional way we have several teaching strategy and using the positive and using a small group discussion. And then we can have our uh, group activity in class. But using technology, we can do it the same online. Yeah, this is a jumble. Yeah, so we can apply uh, technology, but also to achieve the teaching uh, learning outcome as well. I think that is important is the future of nursing 2020 to 2013. Yeah. How do we educate nurses for the future? I think I, I love this uh, award sentence. You cannot transit wisdom and insight to another person. The sea is already there. A good teacher touch the sea, allow it to wake up, to spoil and to grow. So I the end, I just want to share with you, we teach the individual, not the curriculum. We teach our students, not teach the, uh, uh, just a, a, a machine. So the technology, digital technology is uh, our weapon. We need to think about how do we design a curriculum 
and then to educate the uh, a nurse with uh, uh, with caring and really can touch and provide care uh, to our patient. Thank you. That is my sharing. Thank you so much, Dr. Naying Ko. You mentioned about the cognitive presence is very much required in teaching, and we are not teaching an individual not teaching a curriculum, but an individual. Very true, especially in nursing, because nursing requires a lot of compassion and empathy. Thank you so much. Next, I'd like to ask Ms. Prajekta, who is working as the Director of Nursing and also as Chief Experience Officer in Breach Candy Hospital, Mumbai. Prajekta, can you please elaborate on how nursing excellence enhances the patient experience and why it is important for patient outcomes and also for any organization to look into improving their business perspectives also by enhancing their patient experience through nursing care and nursing excellence. Yeah. Thank you, Bobby, and thank you, Voice of Healthcare, for bringing me here for this esteem panel. And uh, I think your question is very clear. Every hospital, when they are looking at their business, they would like to have their occupancy highest and with that aim I think nursing excellence how do we ensure that we have a good patient experience now coming from a hospital who's got more than 75 years of you know, people believing in us coming to us and known for best nursing care I don't know how many nurses are there in this uh, auditorium but I'm sure that nursing is not only taking care of the sick. I would like to just give you background before I come to the question that nursing is, if you look at the International Council for Nurses, okay, which is there for more than 12 decades. If you see their philosophy and vision, they believe that nurses have a collaborative role in healthcare, okay. Coming to the definition of nursing, there are various definitions of nursing, but I, when I was preparing for this particular panel, I love the definition of Virginia Henderson, which says that it is not only caring for the sick, but also the looking at the health of those who are well. So we very much believe in preventive, promotive care right from the beginning. Third thing I would like to say is about nursing excellence. Okay, this particular accreditation is very recent. But before that, nurses believed in ensuring that we take care of the sick as well as well. I mean, those who are not well admitted in the hospital, ensuring that they go back to their normal health. We respect their individuality. That's why we never in our definition taking care of sick as well as well individuals. I think that somewhere brings us very close to patient-centered care, which the patient experience believes in. Even in the earlier panel, the panelist was saying that let them have a better experience that someone was there to look at them. Even though they didn't survive with whatever shortcomings were there at the uh, COVID care center. So relating the nursing excellence to patient experience, I would again say that when we go for nursing excellence, there are seven chapters and I think few chapters totally focus on individualization of the care. Also, it talks about communication skills. If you look at patient experience, there are a lot of surveys being done. In Western countries, they have HCAP survey, which talks about communication. I think I'm out of the 21 questions, many are related to nursing and the communication of nursing to their patients. Now coming to patient experience, which is a very critical component for any, uh, you know, any healthcare industry. There, there, is, there are lots of papers being written on difference between satisfaction and patient experience or one step ahead. Now what we talk about is delightful patient experience. Because earlier we were only, even, even if you see in the literature, there was satisfaction index. Even in our hospital, on monthly basis, we have a patient satisfaction index. 
but we have gone one step ahead of adding patient delightful experience which capture which is captured month on month and also we have something called as uh, i mean i'm sure all of you know that npa score so everything uh, you know the nursing excellence really is very very useful for ensuring that patient experience is taken care now what will how it will have a impact on uh, you know the business first thing it will increase patient engagement as i said in the nursing definition itself we believe in taking care of sick as well as well ensuring that they have their uh, uh, what we can say um, independence with them so even in patient experience the crux of it when i was going through you know various uh, literature topics i mean literature articles what they said is the patients love their locus of control and that come that makes them be engage in whatever we are doing for them so as nurse is there 24 by 7 with them she is the one who will ensure that how she will have patient totally in, involved in the care i think one of my relative was admitted what she was delighted whichever hospital i don't want to name the hospital she said that every day she was explained what is going to be the day like for her what tests are going to be there you know what medicine has been started what which doctor is going to come and see so all that really brought her happiness secondly the impact it will have on organization's reputation i am sure the patient experience is not only the happiness but also there are various indicators which will tell us that how did we take care of patient safety in our organization and if you see in western countries all that is available in on their website i think that transparency helps the patients to make decision that along with my happiness or you know making sure my experience whether am i going to be safe so in order to ensure that organization's reputation is also good very important you have excellent not only the nursing quality indicators but overall quality indicators of the hospital thirdly it will also help for the improving organization's revenue and as you know if the reputation is good it's going to drive the utilization of the hospital you will have your whole hospital beds full and utilization will ensure that you have future utilization better i would like to just uh, end my answer by giving you top five correlates okay in one of the articles there were various correlates how i am trying to relate this patient experience to nursing first thing they said when you have most personalized care patients are going to be very happy secondly best accommodations and third the highest patient safety is one which is going to attract your patient to your organization fourth was said was best nurses but i think the all four three are very much closely related to nursing in any hospital and last was best overall quality so if you remember all these four correlates very much connected with nursing excellence it has very positive impact on patient experience and then the hospital's business thank you thank you so much prajakta it's glad to know that breach candy gives utmost importance to nursing and nursing excellence and it is known for nursing excellence and that is why your director of nursing is also having an additional responsibility of a chief experience officer and on to my right another director of nursing is also the head of strategy and new initiatives i hope more hospitals from other states also follow the mumbai way of recognizing nursing who better than a nurse can improve patient experience thereby you know improving the revenue of the hospital being with a patient 24 by 7 it's a nurse my next question is to dr rajesh shah thank you so much for joining this panel where all we nurses and one uh, doctor medical superintendent and who is a medico legal expert so i'd like to ask you sir on uh, the various medico legal uh, you know challenges and implications related to nursing because though we talk about technologies reduce human error recently in march a nurse named radon watt she was convicted by a jury for negligent homicide in the us and she is jailed 
Some time back, a nurse in Singapore, you know, a decimal error in the infusion pump led to giving her 10 times more the dosage of medication and the patient died. So errors do happen. In India, previously it was only the doctors who were implicated, but now even the nurses are getting implicated. And with the advance in technologies, one need to be careful. So let us hear from Dr. Shaw on the ethical implications on nursing informatics, also the legal responsibilities in nursing. Over to you, doctor. Thank you, Bobby. At the outset, I would remember the foundation of the VOH. And Abzal Kamal came to me and I have joined VOH. And at that time, I have no imagination that it will grown up in such a big way. And I would request all of you to join with me to compliment Navin Nishchar. That it is beyond my imagination that and right from the morning, I am sitting, I am a hungry for the knowledge and I could not leave this hall. The entire day program was such an excellent program that something new, in spite of my 40 years of medical practice, I know so many new things today. So great big hands to Navin Nishal and the team. It was a, an excellent program today. And uh, I would uh, thanks to Bobby also for putting such a nice question. But uh, she started that nursing are not appreciated the first statement by her. And I entirely disagree on this. When I, as a surgeon, I started the first of my book, that is the surgical textbook, and it was written on the first page. I suture it and thou heal it. Because the surgeon does not work, only suturing is done. But healing is done something else. That was the starting of my surgical career. And when I finished my residency, I came to know that thou, what I was previously believed that it is a God. But I, after the experience of seven years of training, four years for the MBBS and three years for a surgical training, I came to know that it is thou is not the God, but it is the nurse. Surgeon does the surgery, but the healing is only because of the nursing care. And society definitely right from the, that day, I became the assistant professor. So during my entire career, I taught my students, all surgical students, that it is the nurse that helps you a lot. The result is in her hand, not in your hand. Because you does the surgery the best you can deliver. But the result delivered will be only by the nursing care, which is later on taken. So this is a very important. And same thing is happening here. What she asked is a nursing informatics. Nursing informatics now have developed a new science and that includes the three sciences. The nursing science, the information technology and the computer science. And that is a revolutionized in the present days that will definitely create a things. And second appreciation I would say, in USA, the nursing anesthetist is paid around two lakhs dollar per annum. It is even more than the local resident doctors who are working over there. So appreciation is always there. Only what is required is a dedication and sympathy. And what we are presently lacking. And that is why the medical legal question is arising. And that is the dedication to the work. Previously, I had a nearly a 40 years of my experience in the medical science. But what dedication and sympathy was seen in the previous days that is being lacking at present day. And why we still remember Florence Nightingale? Only not for this, her knowledge as a nurse, but what dedication she has done with the patient. And that is what the message, important message to be delivered is this. As far as our Indian law is concerned, still fortunately, the nurses are covered under the vicarious liability. The law of vicarious liability says that the captain is always responsible and the nurse is always working under some medical supervision. So still, majority of the cases are judged in favor of nurse. The reason is only one, that they are working under some medical supervision. But recently, I came to know one case where the hospital has punished the nurse because they, in that case, informed the consent was not taken. The 
consent page was blank. And in the logbook of the nursing personality, it was in the hospital said that informed consent has to be taken by the nurse and she can transfer the patient only the signature is available of the patient itself, which was not carried out. And the hospital, after the judgment from the consumer commission, it was as vicarious liability lies with the hospital. Hospital was punished and hospital has punished that nurse. So this is still in India, the nurses are being covered under the law of the vicarious liability. But the days are coming when such definitions are going to be precise. In that circumstances, the responsibilities will come up. So in that uh, things, what we must learn is be careful in delivering the service to the society. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shah. Though you said you disagree with the statement, but towards the end of your talk, you agreed with my statement. Because you said informed consent the nurse didn't take, so she was punished. It's the duty of the doctor who is operating or who is treating to take the informed consent. <laughs> it is not the nurse, it is from the patient will sign in, the doctor signs the consent and the patient signs in front of a witness. In that case, what has happened? I will explain you why the nursing came. The explanation to the patient was done, okay. but the signature was not taken. And it was the nursing requirement that when she transferred the patient to the she should patient, ensure yeah she should ensure, ensure that, that the consent is, not there, is complete she should not transfer and on that ground she was thank you but I'm sure the doctors wouldn't be punished for any such errors in, a, in the hospital yeah <laughs> um, so thank you so much Dr Shah and over to Ms Suganta who has over 30 years of experience at Jaslok Hospital. So Ms. Suganta, you have seen Jaslok transform from the traditional care which the nurses used to give uh, to all those digital innovation and technologies which are used there uh, for rendering patient care. So what are those challenges you face and your nurses face with regard to the use of digital technology in your uh, digital technology and how to overcome the same? Thank you, ma'am. Uh, as I do agree that yes, digital technology is required because that's a need for an hour. Uh, and of course, it helps that it prevents error. It makes the monitoring easy. But all these things required a lot of training, a lot of technical skills. And for that, the nurses have to spend a lot of time to get trained. And uh, since in our hospital setup is where we have a lot of senior like the people working there for a long uh, years. Of course, the youngsters probably because they are now each and every one born with the mobile. So they, the technicality, the skills, they, they achieve more faster than the what uh, rather our generation was uh, having it. Uh, and I think I uh, this training is a technical skill, the, the developing training, it takes time and you know, nurses has to remove a time from their work to get trained and then use it because uh, suppose a patient, as she said, that patient is come after surgery or patient comes at admission. If you want to send an investigation, you want to indent medicine or patient, you have to work on a computer and get the things done because unless you pre uh, create a barcode, unless you pre make an indent, the things will not go for further. So naturally, that's the, the the training is a crucial part, and I I all of you agree that nursing force is a very uh, very demanded all over. Okay, so where. I don't think any hospital says that we have adequate nurses and we don't need any more nurses. So naturally, so the more challenging is, is that, that you get trained yourself, work with the patient and work on this and see that and you balance it. So it's, it's real a challenge. And I think whatever we say that a patient when he's sick or any one of us is sick, we require a nurse in front of us. So uh, whether she works on a computer or whether she does, but they, when they want, when a, the bell is pressed, they expect a nurse to come there, look after them. And we all say that the nurse has to be compassionate, nurse has to be responsible, nurse has to be more kind, more empathetic. And all this requires time to be spent with the patient. And for that, uh, you know, we, if you have, then you need to have larger manpower. If you can afford to have a larger manpower, definitely. But of course, I, I'm not saying that we should not go for it. We only think there are a few things which might the modification require. Again, the fear is then in nurses mind that this devices which are used, I've been using, there's any device failure or there's any network problem, then again, the duplication of a work. 
Okay, then sometimes all these devices where we, because since of uh, uh, the safety point of view, we have an alerts there. So there are so many devices giving alerts. Where sometimes you have an alert, alarm, uh, fatigue. Okay, so where sometimes you try to, you know, ignore things and that can be dangerous again for a patient's safety. So, and another thing is uh, the technology uh, changes over so far. The speed of changing technology is fast. Today we are set up or we with one particular software, maybe after some time with some advancement come, we will go for it. So again, there is a training again, you have to, and it's really painful that if you transfer from one software to another. Okay. So again, we have to see that the training has been done. Everybody uses it and, and the transformation happens so smoothly that the data is remains, it's, it's available and it is used for a patient care. So all these things are there, which just probably causes the little resistance from a nurses that we should go or, or we should have. So because otherwise they feel it is easy and every each and every nurse spend feels that they should spend more time with the patient uh, to deliver a uh, safe care for a patient to be uh, more empathetic so that to see that the patient, I, I, she also talked about patient satisfaction. The patient is satisfied when, when they feel that the nurse, because most of the time the, 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 the image of a nurse, which is there, you know, because nowadays the patient or a relative perception is that nurse, most of the time she's only on the computer. She's busy with the computer, she's, but she's doing a work for the patient. So it's not that if the, the bell press and the patient, the sister doesn't come, but she, because she's indenting, it will be not excused because they say the, the nurse will be delayed. So all those probably things which, which makes the little hesitance from a nursing, but it's not that they are not for it. Definitely we will, would like to go for a, a digitalization. We want the, a lot of innovation happens uh, for a patient safety, for the organization safety, for herself, her safety as well. Uh, only thing is few things which we I think need to look at it is that the nurse involvement when you form a policy, nurse invol involvement when you form a new software that what is her requirement as a user, whether she's comfortable, what else she requires so that she can do justice to a patient care as well as she is using this technique more efficiently so that the, the patient uh, is safe, the organization is safe, the net promoter score increases, patient goes ha ha happily from the hospital, they will, uh, the from the word of mouth, you know, they say that yes, this hospital, particular hospital, we have a overwhelmed uh, experience. So all these things happen when, uh, as ma'am saying that, yes, the nursing should be involved into the, uh, when you form a software or when anything new uh, has to be, uh, saying that they should be a part of it and majorly so that because they are the one as you, everybody agrees that they are there 24 by 7 they are with the patient more they will be the one who will be actually uh, looking at the patient's integrity so where their uh, input has to be valued and uh, uh, of course if you get a more uh, and the training has to be vigorously you have to have a contingency plan that if in case if there's something is failed what can be done so all few this few things have been taken care of i don't think any nurse will uh, refuse to go for a, uh, to, for adopting the new technology. Because I, uh, last year, I just want to say that whatever you say that we are uh, surrounded by the machine, but ultimately we are caring for a human being. And for that we have prepared, uh, we have created all these machines. So ultimately that human factor should not be forgotten. And th that's what I want to say. Thank you. Well said Suganda, the human factor should not be forgotten and for implementing all these new technologies, the nurses need to be trained. For them to be trained, they have to be in the country. In the present scenario, all the nurses immediately after their studies are going abroad. I, I hope a day doesn't come when there are no nurses, all these technologies and equipments and new technology and patients and doctors are there. We do not have nurses to deliver the care. So it's important that we recognize them, we train them better, we support them in implementing all these new technologies to improve the patient outcomes. Over to Dr. Nainko. Anything else you'd like to add and the take home message for the audience? Yeah, uh, I just want to emphasize that um, uh, especially for the digital era, many people uh, worry about uh, artificial intelligence or digital technology will replace nurse. And I would like to say no. Why? Because I think nurse must to learn how to drive artificial intelligence or how to apply 
digital technology to help them uh, to take care of patients because nurse uh, concern is patient and then we provide direct care and those caring is cannot replace by robot. Yeah, that is my tell home message. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nainko. So though we can have robots for uh, artificial intelligence where uh, some of the voice activated AI solutions can help the nursing team to move away from non-core services. Dr. Nainko says that robots cannot replace nurses. Thank you for that message. Over to Dr. Shah. So what she nice it's a right thing what is required in nursing is the sympathy to the patients consider your patients as your brother or sister or mother or father and if you care them with that idea in mind i think no question would arise thank you so much dr shah over to elizabeth thanks Bobby. so i um since i was talking about digitalization and uh, what I realize of late, especially since after COVID, is that when we look at our annual operating plan, every hospital CEO talks about digitalization and getting into being a smart hospital and all of that, uh, which is very important and very nice to hear and do. But I think what is very important is to have a very strong framework in terms of and a very strong roadmap in terms of reaching to this particular goal that we want to achieve. Because else what really happens is you have a whole lot of digital technologies which are available in your hospital without knowing how to use them. And most of them can end up to be a failure. So this I think is very important. And I echo the fact that no equipment can or no technology can replace the human touch and the human sense of um, taking care of patients. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Elizabeth mentioned that though we uh, want to introduce lot of new technologies and we have annual operating plans for that. We need to have a strong framework related to that for the nursing so that it doesn't become a failure. Over to you, Sugandha. Yeah, so as I agree, I already said and I basically, uh, of course, digitalization is important. It will, it's, it's a need in a far and uh, only thing is we need to have a balance uh, between the use of digitalization as well as keeping in mind a human factor. And uh, ultimately, the patient, we are dealing with a human, not with the, the papers or anything. So where that, keeping in that mind and focusing, uh, rather that should be a central focus that we have to do a justice to a customer, a patient who has come to him. And he has to be treated with sympathy, empathy, all uh, uh, the compassionate care. And then he should go with the smile on his face. And that is what is an achievement of, I think, each and everybody, each hospital would is looking for that. And I think that is what we have to go for. Only thing is we need to have just little balance between that and we will achieve a great results. Thank you, Sugandha. What Prajekta would like to add on? I think all speakers have given wonderful messages to the delegates. I would just like to add, I found this very beautiful mnemonic. I think what's going to complement uh, digital transformation is a caring heart and this heart will have honesty to start with. I think patients all want us to be very, very transparent in whatever, you know, we are dealing with their clinical condition or secondly, the excellence and education. I think in nursing we are facing every hospital is facing challenge of attrition, lot of new nurses and what we call is that COVID batches. Those who have not gone to bedside to learn, you know, brush on their skills. So education is the key and advocacy. I think very important that we learn in nursing, we are nurse advocates for our patients. So that will also bring excellent patient outcome or taking ownership of protecting patient rights as well as making them aware of their responsibilities. I think it's both ways you have to be advocate for them. Then the respecting individual differences. I think there are a lot of, uh, you know, medical tourism. We have to have a culturally competent health force, which will know and respect values of patients that are coming to our healthcare industry. And I think nothing can match up teamwork. Nurse plays a collaborative role. And with all other team members, she has to ensure that there is co cooperation, collaboration, good communication, 
among the team members. So that was my small message for the delegates. Thank you. Thank you so much, Projekta, for that wonderful message. I'd like to add that nursing excellence is very much important for better patient outcomes, to improve the patient experience, and also for improving the business in a hospital. Because a happy patient, they go and they promote the care and services which are provided in your hospital. An unhappy patient goes, 100 patients don't come to your hospital. You lose your revenue. So those future lead, uh, hospital leaders or the future hospital administrators out there and the healthcare leaders, please support and recognize nursing because they are with the patients 24 by 7 and they are the most essential component in any healthcare organization. As everyone has said, the core of nursing is care, compassion, empathy and being attentive. Hence, no technology can replace nursing. Come what may, nurses will never lose their jobs. Many other industries, people will lose their job at nursing, they'll never lose their jobs. I always tell my nurses, when the patient goes, many nurses, some of the few nurses get the feedback from the patients, you know, in the Google review. It's not because they were excellent compared to the others. It is because they communicated well. Projector was earlier mentioning, communication is the key. It is not how what all you did for them. It is how you made them feel. During COVID times, the patients couldn't see the nurses or the doctors. They were, they were fully in their PPE for 12 hours at a stretch. But many of the patients were called later for a felicitation or for a get together. Many of them could connect with their nurses or doctors by their voices. And that brought in a lot of tears of joy in the eyes of the patients as well as uh, the healthcare team members. So having said that, uh, the technology cannot replace nursing, but technological in, uh, innovations can de definitely reduce the burden of nurses in avoiding repetitive and monotonous tasks. Nurses too need to upgrade themselves and you know develop competencies in these new technological advances and the organizations need to support them as well. Thank you all so much, all the esteemed panelists for your active participation and all the wonderful messages. And once again, I'd like to thank Voice of Healthcare for including a nursing panel discussion in all your conclave. And I hope in future too, we'll be having more such discussions. Thank you so much, Dr. Naveen, Pinky, and your team. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mrs. Ramesh. You opened our eyes to so many aspects of tech in nursing. I also thank all our guest speakers present both physically and virtually for this session. Now I'd like to request Ms. Bobby Ramesh to please felicitate these panelists. Uh, Mrs. Elizabeth David. Mrs. Sugandha Nayak. Professor Dr. Rajesh Shah. This is Projecta Hinlekar. I request Dr. Mini Bodhanwala to please felicitate Ms. Bobby Ramesh.
Thank you. Thank you, everybody. With that, we come to the end of day one of Digital Healthcare 2022. On behalf of Team Voice of Healthcare, I, Dr. Asavri Savant, thank all our dignitaries from the bottom of my heart for joining us both physically and virtually. Our tomorrow's session is full of informative aspects of Indian diagnostics industry, such as diagnostics, supply chain, and patient centric transformations to name a few. I also have a very nice uh, announcement to make. Mr. Kunal Kapoor, Indian actor and co-founder of Kito would be with us physically. So please join us tomorrow from 10 a.m. We have special announcement for our delegates. We will be presenting certificates to all delegates on stage at the end of last day of the event. So please stay awaited. We extend our utmost thanks to our partners, powered by partner, Creelio Health, international partner, National Chengkung University Hospital, Taiwan, country partner, Israel Economic and Trade Mission, Mumbai, and Australian Cons Consulate General, Mumbai, are supported by partner, Wadia Hospitals, trusted by partner, Apollo Hospitals, our associate partner, Redcliffe Labs and Medgenome, our session partner, StanPlus, contributing partner, Trizone Healthcare Consultants, academic partners, Chitkara University and D.Y. Patel University. We thank all of you very much. Lastly, I request everybody to please proceed for high tea. Join us tomorrow from 10 a.m., same place, same time. Till then, stay healthy and stay happy. Thank you.